Hi guys, uh, it's a heavy box with Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master or Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master, something like that. It's a motherboard for the new M5 socket with the latest and greatest X670E chipset with support of DDR5 and PCI Express Gen 5. So let's see what's inside this heavy box. Obviously the motherboard. Some stickers. Some paper. Another metal batch. And... Oh, Wi-Fi antenna. RGB cables. Connector for easier installing of the front connectors of the case. Uh, thermal probe, maybe? Two SATA cables, two more SATA cables. Let's get to the board itself. And the reason why it's so heavy is because there is a lot of aluminum on it. First of all, look at this massive piece of cooler for the VRM. So, we can expect quite a big load on the VRM from the new processors. There is a little uh, cooler on the top, which despite its small size has a copper heat pipe to transfer heat to the big radiator here. So, quite good cooling for the VRM. But it's not only that, as you can see, there is a massive core for the topmost M.2 drive, which is uh, Gen 5 support, with the PCI Express Gen 5 support. So, we can expect it will get quite hot during operation. But it's just aluminum core, no heat pipes and stuff. Next we have another cooler. This one is more like only a heat spreader, not with that big radiator. Also this big radiator might be a bit of a problem for fitting. Uh, big air coolers so here it is another three PCA uh, M.2 uh, slots here between the PCI Express connectors and we have one by 16 PCI Express slot connected to the CPU two more slots one of which is PCI Express 4x4 and the other is PCI Express 3x2. So it seems the lanes from the chipset are going for the M.2 slots here. From the M.2 slots, these two are connected directly to the CPU and supports PCI Express Gen 5. The bottom uh, two are connected to the chipset and support PCI Express Gen 4, which is still quite something. Also, we have a quick release button for the graphics card, and we still have six SATA ports at the back, and quite a lot of other features. So, there are 
three fan headers at the top, two for the CPU, one for the system. There are uh, addressable and non-addressable RGB connectors here. Also, two additional fan headers uh, on the side. And three more fan headers at the bottom, so quite a lot of fans. The audio is ALC 1220VD, uh, which is quite capable audio. We also have additional two connectors on the side, which are uh, in 90 degrees angle. So what's this? Two, four, seven, ten fan connectors. We have some USB connectors here, additional uh, LED connectors, two ports for USB 3 front, uh, for front connection uh, on the case, and a Type-C here. On the back we have a massive shield which connects with presumably uh, this part where the chipset is and also with the VRM on the side. Also on the topic of the cooler mounting, you can see here that the chipset, uh, that the uh, backplate of the socket uh, has more screws. These four screws are for the socket and uh, in the front. So, the compatibility uh, will be okay for the coolers that use the standard bracket or use the standard backplate for mounting. Coolers that use uh, original mounting backplate might be incompatible with M5 socket. At the back we have, of course, Two connectors for antennas, a display port, an HDMI port, two Type-C ports that are uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2. One of them is with support for display port, the other is Gen 2 by 2. So 10 and 20 megabits per second transfer. Another four Gen uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so 10 megabits and 5 megabits respectively, 2 USB 2 ports presumably for mouse and keyboard, um, LAN port and some audio connectors. And maybe let's see the socket itself on the board. Here it is, and that's it guys, a new M5 motherboard, bye!